If I asked you how well we know the Earth, you would say pretty well, right? But that's not actually the case. We know more about the surface of Mars than we know about our own oceans. We have managed to map Mars at a resolution of 6 meters, but our oceans only 5 kilometers. During the olden days when navigators tried to avoid hidden reefs or shallow shores, they would tie a heavy weight around a rope and drop it to the depths of the ocean and measure the depth step by step. Not only was this highly inaccurate, but it was also unsustainable. During the 20th century, we introduced something called sauna, where we would send sound waves down to the bottom of the seabed and estimate the time it took for the echo to come back. Sauna was great. It was high resolution, but it needed a lot of post-processing. One of the cartographers who did this post-processing was called Marie Thapp. She was not allowed to go on to the sea expeditions because she was a woman. But while doing this post-analysis, she realized something amazing. There was an ever-expanding rift down at the seafloor. This proved two things, that the Earth was once a huge landmass called the Pangaea, and it split into its current continents that are ever drifting away. This was a refuted fact for many years among the scientific community. But now it is recognized as a scientific fact due to all of the sonar data that we have. We can also map the seafloor using satellites. You may be wondering how, since light doesn't travel far from the ocean surface. But due to the special gravitational force on our water bodies, you can ever so slightly see the shape of the seafloor on the water surface. This is great because we can accurately guess what our water surface looks like, but it's not high resolution data and we can't gather meaningful insights from it. So now we have the most ambitious mapping expedition of our time called Seabed 2030. So the Seabed 2030 aims to map all of the seafloor by 2030. They still use sonar, but use autonomous vehicles to reach places that human beings and ships can't. You may be wondering why map the seafloor? Well, first, you can prove that you are right, like Marie Thapp, and second, because the seafloor affects ocean currents, which in turn affects the weather. The seafloor also hosts a lot of marine habitat, and the seafloor is where all the undersea cables that are responsible for global internet pass. Finally, you cannot protect, manage, or understand what you haven't mapped.